And now, live from the, my God, glittering Imperial Rooms Mayfair, it's Bushman and Quantic King Size! <laughs> Busman and Quantic, King Size. I'm Jane Busman. And I'm David Quantic. Hello! And now, five things you didn't know about ready meals. One, the first ready meal was Finnis's delicious scrotolini. <laughs> Testes du rabbit inglese in tomato sauce. Two. In the 1960s, the most popular ready meal was bird's eyes aprinatal linguini. Placenta de cow, shreddo. It was discontinued. Five, the first supermarket ready meal was Tesco's beef calamari. Sphincteri di bull grilled in salsa con nagers. It was hugely popular in Surrey. Finally, the most expensive ready meal of all time costs a staggering 50 pounds a packet. It's Marks and Spencer's bollocky. That's enough. <laughs> oh, no. Miss, pierce me, sir. Sir, comb me, sir. Comb me and part me down the centre. No. <laughs> Crimp me, sir. Low down. Lace my nipples together, sir, and pull the string tight. Get out. <laughs> they were two people in love, but society, with its traditions and conventions, kept them apart. Their love could never be, because they were rabbis in love. Friday, 7pm. I am writing this at the window in my study. Outside, the evening sun glimmers. The late thrush sings, and in the street below, young people drink and converse and laugh happily. How I hate the drinking and conversing and laughter of young people! I have stuffed my ears with bits of old tobacco and stewing steak, but still I can hear them. How I wish I might look down and see your figure coming towards me. Your discreet black shoes, your sober overcoat, the fringes of your prayer shawl fluttering in the breeze, like the wing of a pigeon after it has been run over and is stuck to the road. Our favourite record is playing. It is The Power of Love by Celine Dion. <laughs> Do you remember when we first heard it, all those months ago, when we were double booked for Daniel Green's circumcision? <laughs> Daniel's father was beside himself with having a spare rabbi, but you took control of the situation. Stuff it, you said. We'll all circumcise him. <laughs> that was the moment I knew we were meant to be together. Afterwards, as you delicately ate Stilton and water biscuits in the marquee, some old uncle of the boy came up to you to ask you what wine goes with gefilte fish. And he leant across you so that you could not reach your plate. I wanted to kill him. I wanted to spill his fat brains across the cheese board. Right soon. Yours, etc. Rabbi Esterhaas. Oh, what a beautiful day. The sun is shining through the window, birds are singing, and oh, what's this? I'm eating a plate of splendid food. Mm. Oh, all my favorite dishes are here. What have I done to deserve this? Why am I eating this lovely meal? And why am I in a jail cell? Oh no! It's a condemned man's breakfast! I've been sentenced to death! I'm a murderer! I read your letter with tenderness and longing. I devoured it like a wild fox devours a limping chicken. I was insatiable for news of you. I read your letter. I smelt your letter. I even licked it. And then I found your laundry list on the back. Oh, I have learnt it by heart. But now I must go. Yours, etc., Rabbi Templeman. P.S. Do you still start your stiff collars? <laughs> Risky, but 
but I shan't make it. I have plenty of fuel and just enough food and water for one person. Hello, Carol. I'm on the biplane. Yeah, I seem to have put my foot through some kind of fuel tank. No, I don't think I'm going to make it tonight. The domestic cat. Man's friend. At first sight, the cat is tame, no longer ruled by its natural instincts. But as soon as the owner is out of sight, the cat shows a very different side. A mouse appears, and the law of man is gone. The mouse peeps out of its hole, and suddenly the cat pulls out an enormous sledgehammer and thumps the mouse flat like a saucer. But the mouse pops back to its normal size, scurries into the mouse hole, and returns with a bowling ball. <laughs> Summoning amazing strength for such a small rodent, the mouse lifts the bowling ball up into the air and brings it down upon the cat's head. The cat's eyes roll round and round and round in its head like the lemons in a fruit machine, finally stopping on a double dollar sign. At which point the maid comes in and goes mental. Und now auf der German Television über den Sporten Show Three World Cups und No World Wars um der Funny Show auf Deutschland mit Laufen <lacht> und also Cruelty. <lacht> Der Fingermann. Guten Abend, Passengers. Wir sind flying auf einer Height von 16.000 feet und sonnen wir surfen Refreshments und duty frei. Hey, hey. Half an hour on Radio 3. It's Ludwig van Beethoven's diaries. Read out at the speed of about a word a year. <laughs> by some old woman with a spit problem. <laughs> but first, it's the cartoon adventures of the young Marquis de Sade. France, 1794. Paris is aflame with the revolutionary ideas of Robespierre. Forced to leave Paris, the young Marquis de Sade finds sanctuary at the home of his Tante Marie. Oh, there! Run away now, little mouse! Run away! Oh, you cannot! I forgot! I have pulled your legs off! <laughs> now to pull the legs off a cow! Oh, little Marquis! Good news! Good news! What? Are you gonna whip me? No, I am not going to whip you! The good news is a Scarlet Pimpernel is here! Hello, little boy. <laughs> I've come to rescue you. But I do not want to be rescued. I want to have my plums put in a vice and squeeze them to... Oh, shut up, you little sick sod. <laughs> I've risked my life to come here. I've been locked in dungeons, tortured in the Bastille, and finally only escaped by becoming the prison bitch of a Marseille sailor. <laughs> Woo! Some guys have all the luck. <laughs> Please go with the Pimpernel, nephew. Your life is in danger. Oh, all right. On one condition. And what is it? Whip me till my bum spins like a tub. <laughs> oh, all right then. <laughs> oh, Scarlet Pimp, I love you. Whip me, not the horse. Whip me, whip me, whip me. Oh, what a beautiful day. The sun is shining through the church window, birds are singing, and what's this? 
I'm at a wedding and I'm giving away my beautiful young daughter. It's the proudest day of my life. What have I done to deserve such happiness? But why is everyone looking at me funny? And why am I putting a ring on her finger? <laughs> oh no! I'm marrying someone half me age. I'm a dirty old man. <laughs> Und jetzt auf der German Television über den Politen so for us the war is over kommt der Funny Show auf Deutschland mit Laufen <lacht> und also Cruelty ja <lacht> der Fingermann Oh which von this blouse shall ich aufgetrying Oh eine kleine Fülli Blouse <lacht> oh! <laughs> Last year I was in a traffic jam so long I got married to the man in the next lane. But after six hours we split up because we both felt it wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> Driving is knackering. I want a car like Knight Rider that does all the work for you and talks and is gay. <laughs> I've often wished my car was gay. It would smell fantastic and be clean. Although I'd have to go and collect it every morning from outside some techno club where it would have fallen in love with some big German lorry it's known for ten minutes. <laughs> Cars are far too powerful for their job. They're like huge tigers that have to sit in rows all day being polite to each other. Imagine if tigers were polite. My goodness, I'm frightfully sorry. I've chewed your guts out. <laughs> Bicycles are better than cars, but on my bicycle, I'm not to sit through like a three-legged spider in a sulk. <laughs> Trains are better than bicycles, but being ostensibly female, I'm always joined on the train by four men on their way home from some beer. <laughs> Who've got a catchphrase, because they're friends, and their catchphrase is... <laughs> <laughs> Plus, trains are filthy. You have to hope that a thing on the floor that's just rolled the whole length of the carriage just to mate with your foot <laughs> is a Coke can, not a severed head. <laughs> and every night, some disgruntled train employee goes up to the train carriages making circles of brill cream on the windows. <laughs> Buses are better than trains, but at the moment, they seem to be staffed by all saints. <laughs> can you tell me what time the last bus is? I've got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't get on the bus because the doorway's blocked by some dimbo slapper in combat trousers wearing combat trousers because the fashion army is the only army that would have them <laughs> the real army has an ad that shows a dying black man and the blonde one with the tats out of all saints who says who do you save first <laughs> the blonde one with the tats out of all saints so you can kick her to death yourself <laughs> well, that's enough about cars <laughs> Doctor, there's something the matter with Mr. Popplestone. I'm not surprised, you foolish woman. I said polish his golf balls and put them away. Not wax his scrotum and set fire to it. <laughs> Where do all these geese come from? Friday. Pizza. Saturday. Pizza. Sunday. Oh, Sunday dinner. Boring. No. Sunday dinner pizza. Woo! New from Captain Japside. The Sunday dinner pizza. A thick layer of Yorkshire pudding with a gravy and roast beef topping and a lager stuffed crust. Also available, Christmas dinner pizza. A thick layer of Brussels sprouts with a topping of roast turkey and a port and Stilton stuffed crust. <laughs> also available, gay disco pizza. A powerful layer of amyl nitrate with... That's enough! <laughs> and now on Television Suisse Switzerland, after our history programme, Hello Mr Hitler, mm, you're nice. <laughs> it's our children's programme. The Boring Kite. 
Last week in The Boring Kite, little Eric and his devoted papa used the last of papa's bone marrow money to seek the <laughs> Boring Kite in Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Schleswig-Holstein, and Legoland, Paris, where Eric thought he saw it, but he didn't. The Boring Kite. Well, Eric, we are living rough upon the streets. My shoes are filled with blood from following the boring kite across the world. <laughs> and still, we have not found the bastard. <laughs> oh, Papa, without the boring kite to be my friend, I am so sad. I want to cry. I am going to cry. I may cry forever. Boo-hoo! <laughs> Eric, is there not a little girl too sick and frail to leave her attic who could be your friend? Oh, it is too late for girls in the loft. I can love only the boring kite. <laughs> look, Papa! Papa, look! Look, Papa! Look, 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 Papa! Look, look, look! Tell me, Eric, what do you see? Surely it cannot be the boring kite. <laughs> In the middle of the street, the boring kite. There, Papa, get it, Papa, get me the boring kite. Run, Papa, run, 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 run. Ah! <laughs> papa, can you speak, Papa? Papa, move the car off your throat. Oh, Papa, thank you. Now at last you have a friend. I have the boring kite. Oh, I have... Um, Eric. Why have you dropped the boring kite? Look over there, Papa. Blowing along in the gutter. Like it has no cares in the world. It is a greasy pepper bag. Oh, Christ. Greasy pepper bag, will you be my friend? Come to me, greasy pepper bag. What will happen next week in the greasy paper bag? <laughs> Who can say? Um... I think the exhaust pipe of this lorry has gone up me. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful day! The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and I'm in bed with seven beautiful women! And I've had sex with all of them. <laughs> what have I done to deserve it? Why am I in bed with seven young women? And why have they got no heads? <laughs> oh no, I'm a serial killer! <laughs> Later on Central, after a cookery show presented by a recently outed gay man who had been living quietly in Derbyshire and now wishes he was dead, it's time for our rural drama, Puritan Vet. <laughs> Last week, the Puritan Vet smashed a kitten's paws flat for not knowing the Book of Revelations by heart. <laughs> Puritan Vet. Oh, veterinary, we're so glad you could come out to the stables. We're at our wit's end. Why have you dared call me out in this weather? Is Lucifer dancing on clothed in the paddocks? <laughs> no, veterinary, it's our prize stallion. We've all the mares lined up for him to cover and he won't, you know, he, he won't... <laughs> hmm. Step outside, farmer. I want to be alone with your horse. <laughs> Right, horse. Gay, is it? 
Horse arse bandit arse. <laughs> Where are my shears? <laughs> Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred! I'm coming, ready or not! Oh, where can I hide? Oh, a big old wardrobe! I've never seen that before. The others will never look for me there. Golly, this wardrobe is a doorway to a magical land! <laughs> Yeah, Carol, I'm in the wardrobe, yeah. I hate Sundays. You work five days in the employ of a man who deliberately goes to BHS and says, I want ten identical Draylon shirts and they absolutely must really pong when I lean over people and sweat onto their desks. <laughs> then, if you're lucky, you get drunk in a crappy pub on Friday night full of arse-munch-faced weekend drinkers who think a pub is where you go to show how good you are at standing up and wearing a CNA Burberry raincoat copy and saying, I'm in the chair, every five minutes, even though they're not, they're standing up in your way. The next day, after being woken up by the kids and thinking, funny, I don't have any kids, you go to the supermarket and you queue up behind some oaf with a huge clothes peg instead of a face who can't tell the difference between eight items or less or five trolleys full of Highland Spring. <laughs> On Saturday night, you phone for a pizza and spend five hours going through the ingredients with a girl who seems stunned that she is working in a takeaway pizza place. <laughs> Rather than, say, the palace of Ra, the sun god. And then wait until her future husband, Jim Jim the moped boy, <laughs> negotiates the treacherous five yards to your house with someone else's dinner in his bag. <laughs> and what is your reward for these travails? Sunday. Sunday, the worst day of them all. Sunday, the Andrew Ridgely of the week. <laughs> Sunday, a day so duff and dull and tedious, it makes Monday look like a six-day sex and vodka holiday in Barcelona. <laughs> With that woman you saw on the bus once but were too scared to talk to. In the old days, Sundays were great, but now we're a godless nation. This is not good. We have Sunday opening, so we can go to Sainsbury's seven days a bloody week. And we have youth television, which is presented by spunky young people who all used to wear yellow windcheaters and give away cigarettes in pubs. And works on the misguided principle that MTV can be copied by the nation that invented Spotted Dick. I don't like Sundays. If one day there really was a month of Sundays, I would top myself. <laughs> I would rather go through my sister's fifth birthday party when my mum locked me in the garden so as not to frighten my sister's friends again every day for a year. I would rather reset my Cub Scout sewing badge again without a first aid team to plaster the wounds on my face. I say, let's make Sundays like leap years and have one every four years. Oh, and let's put vodka and cranberry sauce in the water supply. And crisps. Dave? Yes? How many women have you been out with? Oh, don't be coy. Not being coy. Don't understand the question. <laughs> oh, no! Miss, flick sweat at me, sir. Problem in navel, sir. Watch your finger disappear slowly. No! Wink at me, sir, naked. Put me under, sir. Put me under and wake me up with the keys. Get out. Bruise me, miss. Bruise me internally. <laughs> Out! The forest. In summer, a place where man can explore his relationship with nature. It is the hunting season, and the hunter moves quietly through the trees, ever wary of disturbing the prey. Suddenly, the hunter spies the duck. He raises his gun to his shoulder, takes aim, and cocks the trigger. But the duck points to a sign saying, Duck hunting season, which has been crossed out to read rabbit hunting season. <laughs> the hunter looks behind him to see a rabbit beckoning him out of a rabbit hole. The hunter points his gun down the rabbit hole, whereupon the barrel of the gun appears out of another rabbit hole <laughs> and shoots him up the arse. The hunter is burned from head to toe and... Only his furious eyes are visible. <laughs> the duck slaps its thigh and laughs when the hunter fires a lucky shot right at the duck that causes all its feathers to fall off and its beak to drop on the ground. <laughs> a 
and the duck has to pick its beak up and stick it back on. Meanwhile, the rabbit has disguised itself as a woman with lipstick and a bonnet. And is flirting with the hunter who kisses him. Giving the duck enough time to run in a zigzag into the sunset and the safety of the forest. And giving the rabbit time to slip an enormous bomb into the hunter's pocket. The hunter, saddened, makes his way back to his house, where he's hit on the head by the cat and roasted in the oven until his eyes implode. He was a fat tubbo, but I loved him. I'm posh, but I'm crying. So am I. Stop all the clocks. Cut off the telephone. Prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos. And with muffled drum, bring out the coffin. Let the mourners come. Hello, Carol. I'm at the Posh Toffs funeral. Yeah, it's wall to wall Posh Toffs. Yeah, no, I'm gonna be. Well, that's it for tonight. You've been listening to Busman and Quantic, King Size. Darling, I want you to, uh, to marry me. Oh, Steve. But, Emma, have you forsaken all the others? I have. I've, I've said goodbye to John, Gareth, Lionel, Chris, and Terry, and Caroline. <laughs> oh, darling. But who's this? It's Peter. I've come to say goodbye. <gasps> she can say goodbye to me first. Look, Emma, I know it was only a fling. I can't live without you, Emma. I've come to say goodbye. Goodbye to the living years. Live from the sumptuous <laughs> Imperial Rooms Mayfair, that was Busman and Quantic King Size. Written by and starring Jane Busman and David Quantic, with the Peter Serafinowicz man, the Emma Clark woman, and that Steve Brody. Additional material by that Steve Brody. The producer was that Anton Decklack man, Phil Bowker! <laughs> Where me on your head? Mind me bum for a shilling. <laughs> oh.